Hello, I'm back, and I'm not shrinking, guys. It's just a different camera angle. I, I know, I look a little bit smaller. Also, I finally got some soundproofing up around here. Let me know how well it's working. Hopefully it's not that echoey. But, anyways, that's not important. Uh, so, let me ask you a question. How many times have you seen Alice in Wonderland? And I don't mean how many individual times you've watched one of the movies or anything. I mean, how many different times has that story been told that you're aware of? Because, according to Wikipedia, there are 44 feature-length film adaptations dating all the way back to 1903. That's 120 years ago. And they are still making these. There's more planned in the future, for some reason. And these are mostly direct adaptations of the story. You know, it's like taking the original book written by Lewis Carroll in 18-whatever, who cares, uh, and just translating it into a different medium. Sometimes these are close adaptations, which follow the story pretty much exactly. Sometimes these are much looser adaptations, which change stuff and make stuff up. But these are direct adaptations of the original Alice in Wonderland book. So the story has been told a lot. But then you think of... I, I don't even know the word for it, but all the fan fictions, or reimaginings, or retellings, or whatever you want to call it, of Alice in Wonderland, where it's basically just taking some elements of the original story and then inserting them into something that is basically just completely different. Uh, good examples being The Looking Glass Wars, which is... I I've actually read that book a long time ago, and basically it's, okay, what if Alice in Wonderland was a, a book, it was a real book that was written by Lewis Carroll, but it was based on a true story, but he changed a lot from the true story, so like, this is the real one. Uh, and I'm sure there's other people that have done that same thing. Or Alice in Zombieland, which I have not read, but from what I understand is basically just Alice in Wonderland plus zombies. You know, it's not the exact same story, it's not just a straight up retelling, but it is basically taking all the same stuff and remixing it into something at least somewhat original. And there are a ton of other books that do something similar to this. There's, all, there's those two, there's also Tainted Wonderland, Sons of Wonderland, The Wonderland Murders, Vincent in Wonderland, and a bunch of others. You can just look at this online. And I, I honestly was going to list every one I could find, but then I realized that list would just keep going on and on. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I will let other people <laughs> look it up themselves if they don't believe me. There's, there's a lot of these. But those are just books. If we look outside the realm of books at things like video games, there's stuff like Alice Madness Returns, which is, again, just a basic uh, retelling of the story, which is pretty substantially different than the original. It's not a direct adaptation. And because of how many of these there are, or at least partially because of just how many of these there are, I really hate Alice in Wonderland. I, I don't wish that I hated it. You know, it's a, the original book is a perfectly fine, fun little kids' story, and some of the adaptations, like the Disney one from the 50s, are kind of fun as well. And, hell, I think the Disney adaptation from the 50s is more iconic than the original book, but that's... whatever, we'll get to that later. And I just... I hate Alice in Wonderland so much because it won't go away, and it's loved by all of the most annoying people on Earth. Like, from the time I was in, like, elementary school up until I finished high school, all of the most annoying emo kids or emo-adjacent kids ha had a bunch of Alice in Wonderland merch. I have no idea why. I don't know what connected with them about it. But it's just, it's just everywhere. And on top of that, because it's been done so many times, or in spite of it being done so many times, there's no originality there. Like, it's all the same thing over and over again, except for some which are completely different, like I mentioned the Looking Glass Wars earlier, and they basically have nothing to do with the original Alice in Wonderland. Like, Looking Glass Wars is essentially just an original fantasy story with some elements that are kind of related to Alice in Wonderland, and also Lewis Carroll is there briefly, and it mentions that he wrote the book, and that's where we know all of this from. Because, like, in that story, Alice... Like, Wonder Wonderland is just another world parallel to Earth, like a different dimension, and Alice is the princess of Wonderland, and she winds up having to flee because the Red Queen takes over and she winds up on Earth, 
and while she's here, she tries telling people about Wonderland, and people think she's just a kid with an overactive imagination, and it just, you know, it becomes a story about, okay, can she go back home and reclaim her lost kingdom? And it's very, very different than the original. Like, the Cheshire Cat, for instance, is an assassin. He, he's a like an eight-foot-tall furry, basically. <laughs> you know, he's a humanoid animal who is just a killing machine that can cut through soldiers and guards and everything without too much trouble. And he also literally has nine lives. Like, the characters have to kill him nine times over the course of the story before he stays dead. And it, it's not treated with, like, fantastical whimsy the way the original book was. It's actually treated as, like, a serious threat to the characters. And th that's just one thing that has stuck with me over the years because I actually like that change, but basically what I'm getting at is there's some elements from the original story, but they're so far removed that it's just... It, it, the Looking Glass Wars and Alice in Wonderland have basically nothing to do with each other. Now, how many times have you seen The Wizard of Oz done? I think you see where I'm going with this. It's been done a lot. There are 30 film and stage adaptations according to Wikipedia. Again, there, there could possibly be more. Uh, this is not counting unofficial spin-offs or prequels. You know, things like Wicked, which was a stage show and a book, and I believe they're also making it into a movie, uh, which is not written by L. Frank Baum. It's not officially based on anything L. Frank Baum wrote, I don't believe. Uh, but it's just, yeah, it's like a unofficial prequel to the story. Uh, or Oz the Great and Powerful, that terrible movie with James Franco, which is also unofficial. Uh, or spin-offs and retellings, like there's one, I am suddenly drawing a blank and I didn't write it in my notes, but there was like a sci-fi miniseries, Tin Man, that was it, and it was also like a retelling of Wizard of Oz, it was, was kind of weird. And then there's stuff like uh, Return to Oz, which is a movie from the 80s, which is very loosely based on the sequels to the original book. Also, yes, the original book had sequels. A lot of you probably didn't know that. And just like with Alice in Wonderland, there are like weird fanfics slash reimaginings slash retellings slash whatever you want to call them, where they just take some elements from the original, and other than that, it's a completely different story, like The Hedgehog of Oz, or one that I haven't read, but I have put it on my list of like really stupid books I might get to and make fun of one day, called uh, Dorothy Must Die. And that one is similar to Looking Glass Wars, uh, it's one where the original book is real and, like, the characters are familiar with it, but the the story is completely different from what they've heard. Like, I, I don't know what you would call this trope, but uh, Dorothy Must Die is about a different girl from Kansas who gets sent over to Oz and, like, oh, Dorothy is actually an evil dictator. And, like, that's why I want to read it and make fun of it someday, because <laughs> it just sounds ridiculous. Now, I won't repeat this pattern over and over again, but just think about how many times you have seen some stories told. Like, there, there's some which they just will keep making over and over and over again. Think about how many times you've seen Peter Pan, or Robin Hood, or A Christmas Carol, or The Three Musketeers, or Dracula. Like, and keep in mind, these are all just books from like the past 200 years. You know, like th those, and I mean, I'm not hating on any of those books. I've read all of them, they're pretty good, but like, they've just been done a lot, and they're all books from, like, the past 200 years. If we go back even further to, like, myths and old fairy tales and legends and stuff, there are way more, and the problem becomes way more acute. How many times has Beauty and the Beast been done? How many times has Red Riding Hood been done, or changed around at least a little bit? Like, that really terrible movie, I think it was just called Red Riding Hood with Amanda Seyfried. <laughs> God, I hate that movie so much. I don't know why that is stuck in my mind over the past, like, 10 or 12 years since it came out, but I really, really hate that movie. I might just do a rant video about that one day because I don't want to get off topic. But, you know, and think about how many other things have been made based on Greek myth or Norse myth. Uh, and, you know, some of those are just direct retellings. Other times it's just taking all the same, you know, familiar figures and concepts from those myths and just putting them into other stuff. Like, the, all the Thor movies from the MCU, that's basically just, hey, here's Norse myth and then throwing it into the midst of all this other crazy Marvel stuff. Or Greek myth, you know, Percy Jackson, I love those books. I have 
very fond memories of reading them as a child, and even as an adult, I can appreciate a lot of the good parts of them. Uh, but they are basically just, hey, here's all these old myths placed into a modern setting, and then we'll add in new characters like Percy and Annabeth and them, and they're like the main cast, but it's essentially, the setting is essentially just Greek myths. Uh, or how about God of War, the original God of War games? That's basically all these Greek myths are more or less the same as they've always been, and then they just add in this one wild card, which is Kratos, the unstoppable killing machine, and he has his own original story and everything, but then he just completely fucks everyone else. What I'm getting at is, even if these aren't direct adaptations, they are basically still the same ideas and the same settings and a lot of the same characters and everything, which is just being done again and again and again. And these are all public domain, which if you're unfamiliar, basically public domain just means copyright law doesn't apply to them. Like, you would need permission to do anything, say, that deals with Mickey Mouse, or if you wanted to, like, do a retelling or reimagining or whatever you want to call it of something else that's popular that's more contemporary, like, say, The Hunger Games, you would need to get legal permission from whoever owns the copyright, which I believe in this case would be Suzanne Collins, but whoever happens to own it, you would need to get their permission, and it's likely that a lot of them would just say no. Whereas if you just wanted to remake The Wizard of Oz, or you just wanted to do yet another Robin Hood movie, you can just do that. You know, those are public domain, which means anybody can do anything they want with them and profit off of it. So it is cheaper and easier to make, but it's also, and probably more importantly, cheaper and easier to market because these are all recognizable brands. You know, even though Robin Hood has been done a trillion million frickin' times, if you see a movie and it's called Robin Hood or any variation of that, you at least know somewhat what it's about. You know, you know it's gonna be about a dude who's really good at shooting a bow and arrow, who steals from the rich and gives to the poor. Like, the last major Robin Hood thing that I believe came out was the movie with Taron Egerton in like 2017 or 2018. <laughs> I hate that movie, but it's so hilarious. Like it's just it's just so bad. <laughs> every every part of it is so bad and it has Christian Grey playing one of the characters. It's it's beautiful. It's a mess, but I kind of love it. Signal the stone throwers now. Match an order. <laughs> But the point is that advertising and marketing for these is easier and cheaper because there's just a tsunami of stuff that is released constantly. You know, new books, new movies, songs, video games, TV shows, like all sorts of this new stuff. And frankly, most you're not going to hear about the majority of it. Like it's not even you're going to hear about it and just not be interested and not watch it or read it or whatever, like, you're probably just never going to even hear about it because there's just so much. Like, no one could possibly keep track of it all. But if something comes up that is Robin Hood or Dracula or Three Musketeers or Wizard of Oz or whatever, then you will at least recognize that. And even if it doesn't necessarily pique your interest, you are going to pay slightly more attention to it. And of all the people that know what those are and recognize it and pay slightly more attention to it, there will be some percentage that actually get interested and look a little more into it. And of those small percentage that are more interested and look a little more into it, some will actually like consume slash buy the thing that is being advertised. And like I mentioned, a lot of these are direct adaptations, but a lot of them are, you know, just retellings where they, Im uh, where they acknowledge that the original work exists, but it's like based on a true story, but they changed a lot from the true story. Like I mentioned, Dorothy Must Die. Again, Wizard of Oz is a well-known book in that world, but it's like, it's propaganda made to make Dorothy look good or something. <laughs> Again, I haven't read it. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that. And of all of these that I've seen, the only one that is good is, again, The Looking Glass Wars. And it seems to me that the author basically just wanted to do a completely original story, and then she just slapped Alice in Wonderland on there as a way to grab attention. Because really, if you just change some of the names around, 
and you didn't mention the whole bit with Lewis Carroll, you would be hard pressed to even uh, recognize it as being based on Alice in Wonderland because it changes so, so much. And I get why you would want to put a recognizable brand on the thing that you spent a lot of time and effort creating. Like, no matter how good art is, it does need to get some sort of attention, and in order to get attention, sometimes it needs to do stuff that, I, I don't know, I was gonna say dilutes it, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. Like, it just needs to do something, anything, to stand out from the pack. So, I understand why people use public domain. And, hell, I think a lot of people, like, see the original stories and like them and think, okay, I could do, like, a modernized version of this, because in some cases these stories are not necessarily bad, but they have aged quite a bit and don't appeal to modern people as much as they would have whenever they first came out. But here's the real kicker, which I think is causing a lot of the problems here. Very few people, including the creators of this stuff, like, people who write crap like Looking Glass Wars, Alice in Zombieland, or the million other spin-offs and variations of all of these public domain works, very few people have read the originals. Like, not a lot of you have read the original Wizard of Oz book. You're very familiar with the franchise, because, you know, there's that movie from 1936, which is, you know, it's stuck around for almost 90 years, so... Like, it's a good movie, and everyone knows about it, but it also changes quite a bit from the original. Like, for example, uh, the end of the movie is when Dorothy and the wizard are supposed to fly off in a balloon together, but he accidentally goes off without her. L like, in the book, there's quite a bit after that, just as an example, and a lot of people don't know that, because they just, they haven't read the original book. But also, very few of you have read the original Dracula, or the original Three Musketeers. So, like... You know about these things, but you know about them basically through osmosis. You know, you know about them because they've been done and adapted so many different times that you're just somewhat familiar with all of the many, many iterations of them. And the problem with this sort of thing is that you don't know exactly why and how the originals were good, or at least why the originals have stuck around for as long as they have. You don't understand what appealed about them. Like, you only know other people's interpretations, and a lot of times those interpretations are based on other people's interpretations, which are based on other people's interpretations, and so there's just many, many layers back before you finally get to the original. And because there's so much distance and you're playing this long-ass game of telephone with the original, a lot of people, even if you're familiar with the you know franchise or intellectual property or whatever you want to call it, even if they're familiar with it, they tend to make a lot of the exact same mistakes, which, in many cases, the originals didn't make. Like, for instance, the Three Musketeers, in the original book, the Musketeers are a bunch of dipshit aristocrats who go around making a bunch of trouble while they're fighting other dipshit aristocrats, and they kill a whole bunch of, like, common people in their quests for power and quests for revenge and quests for pride and, you know, all this stuff. Like, th the Musketeers aren't, they don't really come across as heroes in the original story, but a lot of the adaptations and retellings and everything have made them seem much more heroic because, again, a lot of people haven't really read the original, which I have. I feel like I'm one of six people that has sometimes. And the same is true for shit like Alice in Wonderland and Dracula and just all of these. There's like weird aspects to them which weren't in the originals but have just become accepted as part of them in the uh, broader culture, and a lot of the times these aren't, these aren't good. They're just doing the exact same shit over and over again because it's just uh, adaptations based on adaptations, based on retellings, based on adaptations, based on different interpretations. Like, it, it's inbreeding. That's what it is. It is literary and philosophical inbreeding. So yeah, this is basically what I'm getting to with the title of the video. Just let public domain die. Just stop using it. I swear to God, you really do not need to do this. Like, again, I mentioned earlier that people will attach a recognizable brand to whatever thing they're creating as a way to draw attention, and maybe that would have worked 30 years ago, but it's been done a lot now. Like, there are too many people trying to get attention with that exact same idea, and so 
now this sea of like retellings of Alice in Wonderland, retellings of Wizard of Oz, like this has become its own sea of crap and its own tsunami of shit which is being thrown at people's faces and they just tune that out too. So you're, it's just part of the flood. You're not actually gaining any recognition and you're not really gaining a any eyeballs on your thing even if you want to anymore. Like, so it's not actually helping you that much. But also, like I mentioned, you're probably just going to be making very similar mistakes that other people have made over and over and over again. And even if you don't make those same mistakes, like, what are you really doing different? What are you bringing to the table here? D does this need to be told or said a million more times than it already has been so told or said? I would say if you're like really interested in any of these franchises, like check out the originals and see like what about them appealed to people and take inspiration from it. Like don't just try and redo it again. Like don't say, okay, I'll do Beauty and the Beast for a modern audience or I'll do Tarzan except he's in the city now instead of in the jungle, which was an actual thing. That was a, a show on the CW a long time ago. Look it up if you don't believe me. But like, instead of doing that, just say, okay, we'll take inspiration from it and we'll do something kind of different with that idea. Like, please, just for the love of God, stop inbreeding. I don't want to end on the stop inbreeding line, so uh, please like the video, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, become a patron and all that other stuff, and now here's the end credits. Goodbye. Wow, you, you're still watching? I, I mean, I guess I appreciate it, but I'm not sure why. I mean, at this point, all that we have left is all these names here. These are my patrons, and including my $10 and up patrons. Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dawn, Dio, Echo, Flax, Karkat Kitsune, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Micaphone, Mistboy, Peep the Toad, Roby Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Tesla Shark, Ve Victus, and Wesley. These are all great people, you know? Let me, let me just, let me tell you. If you want to get your name on here, then consider donating to me once a month, become a patron, or if you don't feel like doing that, or you just can't because, you know, you're like poor or whatever, no shame in that, uh, then just, you know, rate the video, comment on it, subscribe, share it around, spam it to all your friends, and uh, yeah, goodbye.